From San Francisco, it's Grumpy Old Doc with Dr. Gene B. Gene Dobre, this is Dr. Gene Bede, and welcome to Grumpy Old Doc. Did you have a little problem understanding what I was telling you? I was telling you good day in Polish. Of course, all of you know Spanish and Polish and Urdu and Arabic and Mandarin and Russian, and you don't, you know. One of the things that has made me grumpy over the years is the challenge of taking care of kids whose parents or caregivers has very limited English. Anybody who's ever been in the exam room has had the experience. You ask a question of mom. The interpreter asks it of mom. And what happens? A long 20-minute answer, and the interpreter stares at you and goes, she says no. You know something was lost, not in translation, but in interpretation. And that's the subject today. It's interpretation. I remember back in Fresno at the county hospital in 1983, when my wife and I were providing pediatric care to a huge influx of Hmong refugees that were fleeing Laos. We had no Hmong interpreters. The only bilingual Hmong that existed were high school students, and they were generally family members of the parents of the patients we were seeing. They also had no words for many medical terms. You can guess how disastrous the results were. That's perhaps the worst example, but anybody who has been in healthcare for any period of time knows to rely on family members, whether you're a hospital, a doctor in practice, it's simply wrong. And when I was auditing health plans, there are requirements that health plans make interpretation services available and readily available at the time of need. But where do you find that Hmong interpreter when you need one? Well, I'm here in San Francisco with Brian Forrester, CEO of Boost Lingo, a company that may offer a technological solution. I'm here, by the way, let me describe where I am. I'm in the middle of SOMA. There's a sea of programmers and desks. I feel 40 years younger. I feel like I'm a coder part of the tech revolution. Hey, Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us about your company, Boost Lingo. Hey, Gene. Thanks for talking with us today, and welcome to Boost Lingo's headquarters. Boost Lingo is a technology platform that allows healthcare providers to have better access to language interpreters across the globe. We actually provide what we call VRI technology, Video Remote Interpreting is what that acronym stands for. And it's really a new advancement in how language services are delivered in the healthcare medium. So if you have a patient that walks into a doctor's office on an iPad or an Android tablet, or even a web browser, one click of a button, you can get a interpreter on a video feed uh, within a matter of seconds. Traditionally, this is, as you know, in the healthcare profession, this has been done with in-person interpreters or over the phone. Uh, if, you're, if you're on an over the phone interpretation session, there's no real visual cues, there's no context for the interpreter of what's going on in the room. So it really degrades the value of that conversation. And then of course, in-person interpreters in healthcare settings are very expensive. Hospitals or healthcare providers uh, of any sort, even insurance companies, pay an arm and a leg for in-person interpreting. So what we allow healthcare to do, the healthcare industry to do, is have better access to a qualified interpreters, a click of a button. If I'm a doctor in practice, is there some infrastructure I need in my office, certain amount of bandwidth? Do I need to be having iPads for my patients in case somebody shows up that speaks Farsi and nothing else? Yeah, it's interesting. We always joke here that 10 years ago, this would have been a very hard platform to build because the cloud wasn't really in place yet. And so the amount of infrastructure you would have to build locally behind the firewall at the healthcare facility would be cost prohibitive. But now that doctor in the exam room, really all they need is any type of smart device. It could be an iPhone, it could be an iPad. We usually generally recommend something that's mounted, an iPad that's mounted on a stand or any type of computer because we support a technology called WebRTC, which allows you to make video calls through a web browser. No software to install. All you do is log in with your username and password. The doctor would have a username and password, and they would just click a button on the language they need. We support up to 200 different language pairs to English, for example. So Farsi would be one of those. 200. 200 language 200 pairs. 200 language so pairs. So somewhere you got a Spanish Farsi. 
Somewhere we got a Spanish Farsi, although I will say for video, uh, most of our support today is with the denominator language in English. Well, sure, that's where your customer base is. And you probably don't have a lot of doctors practicing in the United States who only speak a foreign language. That's right. It's very rare in the United States you'd have Farsi to Spanish. Mm -hmm. Although we are expanding internationally, and I will say that we have some very unique language pairs that come through. Even we are left scratching our heads because... Uh, we see new languages all the day. We didn't all the time. We didn't even know it existed. How about when I go to my doctor, and near as I can tell, he can't speak English worth a damn. Can I use this thing so I can find out in English what the heck he's really saying? Yeah. So it's interesting because part of what we see in the world today is that there is new advancements in AI, artificial intelligence, and there's advancements in what we call. MT or machine translations, the general consumer will have something on their phone with Google, Google Translate, those types of tools. They don't work very well. Not yet, at least. Not yet, and even Google themselves will tell you it's 5, 10, maybe even 15 years away until those tools really become much more reliable. There's two terms that often get confused. One is translation, and the other is interpretation, and they mean very different things. Translation means, generally speaking, written word. I need a novel translated from Spanish to German. I need software platforms, web interface translated from one language to another. That's a $40 billion industry. But to be clear, Boost Lingo doesn't do translation. We are an interpretation platform, which is a narrower definition, which basically means spoken word, real-time interpretation. While machine learning, machine translation, and artificial intelligence has made a lot of progress in translation, it has even further to go in interpretation. Got it. Because when you, you have spoken word, you have sarcasm, you have... No, slang. never, never from grumpy old doc do you get <laughs> any sarcasm at all. It's not important to our show. Right, so you have all these things that machines can't learn or produce well today. You really need that interpreter there. You need a human person who can take one person's spoken word and really interpret it into another language. And so to answer your question about can I go into this doctor that doesn't speak English and use Boost Lingo? Sure, with that intermediary, that interpreter with Boost Lingo, you can get that third party on a video feed and they're going to be able to... Because that seems like it might be an example where it's kind of running a little bit in reverse of the way that you usually do it. That's right. Yes, I appreciate the distinction between interpretation and translation. I would bet there's all sorts of people out there who have to do both. Maybe we'll talk to somebody about some good translation practices in an upcoming show. The only thing I'd say about that is if you are doing translation of written materials in the medical world, please make sure you do back translation to English and that nothing has gotten fouled up on the way. In any case, tell me about some solutions. I audited health plans. Mm -hmm. San Francisco, San Mateo, all over, they have to have interpretation services available for their members. There are requirements as well for them, and they'll get audited, and if they can't provide those services to their members, they're going to get their wrists slapped for that. Hospitals, I believe, operate under a similar regulation in California, just a different division, LMC, that does them. That's right. That's right. I mean, a lot of healthcare providers don't know the risks and the liability they're exposing themselves to by not providing language services. The Affordable Care Act has a provision called 1557, which actually requires any health care facility. It could be a hospital, it could be a hospice care, it could be an ambulance company. All of these entities are required to provide language services or they're violating the law. What we know is 90% of them don't, especially those in rural areas. There's really not much enforcement. There's not much enforcement, but we have seen precedent. We have seen cases where it has been enforced. And there is a significant risk. And it's not just the ACA, which we wonder every day might be repealed. Even current repeal provision keeps that 1557 provision in place. But also in the Civil Rights Act in 1964, there is provisions that require certain language services. It's more narrow to urban areas where there's a cer- certain percentage of the population that doesn't speak English. Uh, yeah, they have the threshold languages. The threshold languages, yeah. but they're required. And we know that a lot of these hospitals aren't doing it, but it's just the best thing to do anyway. I bet a lot of the hospitals are doing it, and a lot of the, most of the health plans that I audited 
as far as their responsibilities went, they were doing it. That's right. The real issue is, so I'm a doctor seeing patients who are members of that health plan, and all this stuff is available to me, and I tell the patient, bring your son with you next time so he can interpret. Right, which is not a best practice that no. we would recommend. And as you point out, that doesn't usually lead to good results. No. Most healthcare providers, while a lot of the ones in the urban areas, the really big ones, they almost all offer some sort of language services, but they're all looking to, A, reduce costs, Sure and, are. and number two, how can we not hurt the quality of care, right. right? And so what you've probably seen, I would imagine, in time practicing is a lot of hospitals have something called like a, a telephone yep. uh, with a 1-800 number and right. then you go through a call tree. Put it on the speakerphone. Right. There's a bunch of services like that. And it's not full duplex. Right. So when you're talking and they're talking, that's lost to the record right. forever. Right. So they, the hospitals, what they'll do is they'll... They'll use those solutions to check the box. Right. But in practice, the doctor is going to find a nurse down the hall that speaks Spanish. You're lucky if it's a nurse. Yeah, right. And not the guy that's mopping the floor that also knows Spanish but hasn't had enough of an education. That's so that's right. the question. So you get somebody that speaks Spanish. You get somebody that speaks Hmong. How do you know that these people on the other end of your app are really qualified to A, speak that language, B, speak English, and C, for instance, no medical terminology. Right, great question. So we take quality and vetting practices very seriously at Boost Lingo. Every one of our linguists, any interpreter that's added to our ecosystem has to be CMI certified, which is the National Board of Certified yeah. Medical Interpreters. What's CMI certified medical it's, interpreter? Yeah, certified medical interpreter by the National Board of Certified Medical Interpreters. Now, how do they do, do they do all languages there at CMI? They don't cover all languages. Of course, we're, we're lobbying and hoping that they do cover more and more languages. But they cover a lot. The of them. top languages, the most, here in the U.S., for example, Spanish is over 75% of the calls, and the other top 10 languages cover 98% of the calls. So, there are 255 recognized languages in the United States alone. It might be plus or minus five languages there, but the top 10 to 20 are what we really focus on because that's the majority of the calls. So if I was going to look for interpretation services, not in your, I love that word, ecosystem. I'm going to be using that in the future. <laughs> it somehow or another implies predators. For, for, anyway, um, <laughs> if I were going to use an interpreter not on your ecosystem, just pick one randomly. Is it likely, and, and these are people that bill themselves as doing medical interpretation. How likely is it that they're certified by this organization? It is not likely. It's not uncommon, but it's not likely. Okay. Um, are there competing certifying organizations? There are, actually. There's several of them. CMI is the most common, but we also look at other certifying authorities. There's probably three or four that are the most recognized. But it, up until a few years ago, it was very much so the wild, wild west. It was. I remember auditing health plans, and I would say, well, I'd ask them this question. Say, well, there are no certifying bodies, so we've certified them ourselves. The best plans had something that was reasonable. Right. That's right. And we try to operate under, with some sort of reason. We're not, we need to have a certain amount of linguists on our platform to meet the high demand of calls that are coming in every day. But they all have to have three years of experience. Okay. They all have to have certification. And what happens if I'm a doctor, healthcare professional, or a patient? And I've used one of these interpreters on your platform, and it was a highly dissatisfying experience. My father, who's also bilingual, sat there in silence and came back and said, you know, my God, man, he misinterpreted everything. everything. That isn't what the doctor said. That's right. And it can happen. doesn't happen often. But when it does, we have a real-time ratings process in our application. So if they're using Boost Lingo, it's immediate feedback. They can rate the interpreter anywhere from one to five stars based on their professionalism, their proficiency, and we have a separate rating based on the call quality. So maybe the interpreter was really good, but the call quality, the video quality was grainy. We're going to be able to measure that rating as well. And we can also see where there might have been bandwidth issues, where there could have been network issues that interfered with that call quality. So we look at multiple qualitative stats when we're, and if a, an interpreter gets multiple bad ratings, they're not going to be in the ecosystem for too long. So you've had this product live and out there for about how long? About six months. Um, and your base? 